What's going on everyone? This is Token Gaijin with your scrub play of the day here on Scrubcraft. Now, aside from this little misclick right here, which pisses me the fuck off, um, I'm going to be bringing you a Zerg and Protoss matchup with my boy Deathwraith against Onor and Enigma. And in this match, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, switching up because, I mean, we're getting a lot higher. We're starting to try to break into that gold league about damn time. And we've been playing so much that our gameplay has been getting a lot better. Hopefully you've noticed it. If not, then maybe we're just still scrubby. But, you know, I don't know if any platinum leaguers or diamond leaguers are running around with their, their heads held up high and their dick out just like I'm the best. But anyway, I'm going to be going for my standard 10 pull because it is Protoss and uh, Terran. So we're going to be expecting a wall off, which is coming from the Terran. So it's it's kind of nice to have uh, that 10 pull out because not only do I get those early troops out at their base and if I can sneak into their wall, it's just a lot more fun. But I can just transfer them into Banelings if that does not work. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. It's just, you know, there's a wall. I want to bust it. So get out those Banelings and do so. So that's kind of a nice thing to have with that early pull. So I'm dropping my pull down, and they're coming out to scout us. Actually, the Terran is, and uh, usually Protoss scout, but it's uh, it's nice to see some Terran. And Death Wraith is just going for whatever standard build uh, passes his fancy, you know. He likes to adapt to what's going on, and I like to get that early aggression out. So I've got my overload here, making sure no proxy bullshit is happening, because god damn it, proxy bullshit happens with Terran and Protoss all the goddamn time. I can't say anything, because uh, sometimes we do it too when we've been pissed off after a long day of losing. But, you know, just want to make sure that it's not going to happen to us in this game. And we have a regular uh, wall off just going down, so nothing to be too uh, afraid of. Death Wraith does get a little cornered, he wasn't paying attention yet, I'm on a patrol, and it looks like these two pushed him in with damage as he was trying to escape into these buildings. So, looks like he's going double gateway on the toss, so it looks like a zealot rush. Zealot into probably marine early rush. That's usually what that means, is because when you get two gateways out like that, it means you want to get out a lot more units than you do uh, tech. And so you're not getting that gateway tech, or the warp gate tech, not the gateway tech. You're not getting warp gate on your gateways. You're going to be pumping out the zealots, as you can see going on right now. So we're, we're expecting an early marine zealot rush. So I'm going to send out my zerglings. I have no idea if he's gotten even close to this wall off coming down. But I'm going to go check in anyway, rallying him straight to the point where I saw on the wall. I'm also going to be sending my observers around to check out the naturals and things like that. The reason I always check out my naturals as opposed to like the enemy's bases is I've got zerglings and death wraith will get observers. So it's really not that big of a deal to, you know, I, for me to like scout them super early. I mean, it's like the three minute mark. I don't need to know what they're doing at this point. I know they're not. I know they're not fast expanding. Yeah, he's got a zelt right there to block it off. I lose a zergling because that damn marine, and I'm just like, all right, well, I'll just leave him here and switch it up to baneling tech because that is what you need to do. Now my queen, for some reason, she decided to rally out here. I don't know why. I was kind of pissed about that one, too. My my damn rally points need some work, but I'm going to get down this extractor and another one so that I can get out Baneling Tech, get some gas for that, because Baneling, to drop the Banelings, you need to get uh, ga 50 gas to drop Baneling Tech, and I only I don't have any gas out yet. So my clean is going to make her slow goddamn crawl back here as I start working toward that Baneling Tech. Death Wraith is doing very standard. He's getting out some troops. He's, he's prepping for what he needs to do, getting that warp gate out, two gates, a couple of pylons, so he's playing it very, very safe and standard. It looks like the other Protoss is getting out his Cybercore finally, but he's been building up these Zealots. They're going to do that early push, and we've got nothing on the rack, so that means they're going to be pushing out rather soon. And he's sending two Marines to scout to see what's going on. And I'm going to get my expansion down. I have way too many minerals to be, you know, bothered with. I'm trying to get Baneling Tech out, and I already have a couple Zerglings out here, so I'm just like, you know what, I can afford to get some dr more drones, get my Baneling nest down. And then I can expand off of this because Zerg need to get those expansions down. If you're letting your opponents get more economy than you, then you're not going in, the, going to be having a good game because, man, if you get stuck in your base, it is horrid as Zerg. So since I have uh, Death Raid's backup, I'm going to continue to drone up at my base, get my uh, my natural down. And uh, we do see this coming out. Death Raid easily mulls it up because Marines, I mean, they are nothing to Zealots. Zealots just go, Puny Marine. And this was what happens at the same time. They're beginning to push out, and they kill all of my Zerglings here. So I'm just like, oh, god damn it. So we see that. I'm just like, shit, 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 shit. We know they're coming. And I'm just pushing out my Zerglings as fast as possible. My Banelings tech is down, so I'm like, I need Banelings as fast as possible. And the reason I'm going to go for Banelings instead of Speedlings is because these Zealots can mow my Banelings up, or my Speedlings up, and I want to blow them up. And if they explode, uh, I'm just going to destroy them and wreck their day. 
So I'm getting out my Zerglings. I'm going to be trading them to Banelings up here at the top instead of going to the low ground. As Death Wraith tries to hold off as fast as possible. So he starts pumping out. He's pulled out. He goes into the Zealots and he's going to start pulling back. And I start making my Banelings up here. The reason I'm making my Banelings here is because I need Death Wraith to buy me the time to get these to be Banelings. And I can easily destroy this. So he's getting these Force Field down. He's doing the best he can to kite. Going back to my base. These Zealots come up. They're just like, hey, we'll take this. Bad decision. All those Zealots are gone. And into the red the Marines go. So that push is now just destroyed. They spent all those mer minerals and tried to push out that quick. But they couldn't do it because... Banelings just wreck Marines and Zealots up, and since we saw the Zealots and the Marines coming, my Banelings were just an amazing choice. I was going to use them to hit the wall, but I transfer them over. And this goddamn Overlord is over here, so I'm going to lose that relatively soon. That kind of pisses me off. But in case they're trying to get another push, I'm getting a couple more Banelings because they're just not going to be able to deal with it. And it looks like our Protoss enemy is going for a really sneaky expand of the high grade, trying to sneak one off over here. And, you know, that's that's actually a really good tactic because if we don't catch it, we're going to be screwed. And he's also got a little proxy pylon down here. So he's prepping for a full switch and a hit again. He's got uh, Zealot Legs going out. So he's looking at he's going at charge lots. I don't know why he's still doing charge lots because if he sees I'm going Banelings, I'm just going to mop the hell out of him. Because while Stalkers can absorb Banelings pretty well, Banelings just destroy and wreck Zealots. So not really the best choice. I'm getting out some more Speedlings. We don't really know if another attack is coming. So I want to make sure that I have the ability to get some, uh, some not Speedlings, some Zerglings with some Baneling backup in case that happens. And I'm getting more Banelings down here at my base. You know, just in case I need to make a Baneling minefield to just pop up and wreck their day. So only three drones right now on my expansion, but that's just because I was a little cautious about the push. And I also had to get out two more overlords because they killed my other one and he's that goddamn supply blocked me. You don't want that to happen. I'm going straight up into getting my lair tech because I want to switch up to Roach Hydra because while Banelings and Speedlings are nice, Roach Hydra is a great combination that's very, very versatile and allow me to push into the end game unit. So right now I have Banelings, Zerglings, and I'll be having Roaches and Hydra. So I'll have a very diverse army as Zerg, which is really, really good. And that's when I spot this damn pile and I'm just like, oh, hell no, we're not going to let that happen. So Death Wraith is going to go po poke this out. And also, as this Warp Prism is traveling down to go make a hit, because Death Wraith loves Warp Prism play, we're going to spot this expansion. So this Protoss Risky Expansion would have paid off unless Death Wraith decided to do Warp Prism play. And if you are a Protoss, Zealots are just amazing at Warp Prism. You don't even need anything else. Zealots will just do all the work for you that you need. And he's going to drop right here. Now the... Now, the Terran is building a lot of racks. He's building them outside of his base and in his base. Uh, I don't. I think he's doing it because he doesn't want Banelings to rush by. He wants them to be very spread out and to make it kind of hard to hit all his tech buildings. I've seen it happen. Uh, this has been doing a lot. These are. This is a Platinum and a Gold League player. So, I think that's what he's doing. He's preparing for my Banelings. But uh, it really doesn't matter because we're too preoccupied with this base right here. Just wrecking its day with all these Zealots just mauling that base down. So... And that little probe is going to try to get out of there, but I don't think he's going to be able to. And I've got a ton of Banelings and Zerglings at the base, so they do try to attack it. I will be blowing them up, and I'm getting this second base laid down. So I'm getting everything laid down, and I've already got my Roach worn down and my Hydra's down. So this is what I'm going to start teching up. And since my economy is getting to that ridiculous point where I can just start chumping out troops, because the biggest problem with Zerg is watching that supply, I'm going to be getting out Overlords constantly, trying to make sure I don't get supply blocked, because, I mean, it's really easy to make my units. So I'm going to be getting my gas, and I'm going to get Hydra and Roach Tech, and while I'm building those, when I am supply blocked, I'm going to be teching up, because teched up Zerg is scary to deal with. So they're going to be doing very standard. It looks like Marine Marauder. Uh, it looks like they're going right into Stargate, so nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, Death Wraith has been poking in their base with these Zealots and these Sentries and Stalkers, so they're just kind of chilling right here. But he's been throwing them through a loop, just, you know, just pissing off the Protoss, cheesing him, because his economy is really suffering. He lost a base. He's, he's really having to deal with a lot. And he has his zealots just moving around, patrolling the perimeter. Per the perimeter, excuse me for that. What? I don't even know what perimeter was supposed to mean. Just making sure they're not doing expansion. He's going to be poking out. And so is the Marine. The Marine and Marauder Ball is going to be pushing out, trying to stop that. But, I mean, it's... 
it really doesn't matter too much now. And I say maybe you should check this out, but Deathrite doesn't do it because he doesn't want to get too overextended, so he returns to base. But that's okay. It's really not bad. I'm already getting my roaches out, getting some overseers out, getting some more overlords. I need to start getting my diverse units out. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I got a nice creep high between my first two bases, and I'm dropping double Evo chambers, and I'm going to begin teching up soon. I've already got roach speed on the way going down and I will be getting a lot of upgrades soon so I want to get roaches out first because roach speedling is a nice nice transition from baneling uh, zergling and death wraith can get out a nice amount of stalkers so I really don't need to be too worried about that and he's already got a nice base over here which I am looking at and I do have uh, some overlords over here so I see they're not getting this high grade at all because they're gonna be trying to expand out this way now and it looks like the Protoss is going for a nice an expansion finally here because his main is just over mined and he really needs to deal with a lot. And I'm just, you know, I'm just building a lot of crazy shit. Getting out these overseers. So now that my overseers are coming down, I'm going to start getting those hydras out as well. I believe I start... Do I start taking them up yet? No, I'm getting the baneling and uh, zergling speed down. Because I don't have a lot of hydralis out yet. So I want to be taking up the units that I do have in number first. While I do continue to resupply. And here comes their push. They're prepping for it. They got a lot of stalkers and zealots and the marines and the marauders, but they don't have any medevacs. So this push is going to be pretty even with the troop count. And here they come. So my zerglings are going to go first. And my roaches are going to start hitting them. And I was uh, not paying much attention. But I do take out a lot of those uh, zealots with those banelings. Some more go down. The rest of the zealots are down. Get some stalkers out. And we're going to start moving into the roaches with this queen. And Roaches and Queen are just really, really powerful. You don't have to worry about too much. I got Roaches resupplying. And Roaches, as I said, are just so bulky. And this Kala is going to drop. And they're just like, I really don't want to deal with it, that Kala right now. Especially when it's getting all those Roaches out. And they back out. And they kept pushing. Uh, we might have been in a little bit more trouble because we were trying to resupply. But I did have enough Roaches coming out on both my bases where we would have been fine. We would have survived that. It just would have been a little bit... Uh, a little bit risky to do and we would have been pushed back a little bit might have lost a building or two but i mean look at this queen like that queen got so many how many kills uh no kills really no kills queen usually queens get a lot of kills because they're so bulky i'm getting a lot more roaches out because i'm just like all right roaches will just maul this trying to get my creep highway down a little bit more completed and double upgrading uh, while I'm trying to get my units out because I want that range and armor so if they do make that push again my roaches are just going to be that much more heinous to deal with and it looks like they're building up right around here but they're not going to push out any soon because the Protoss knows he needs to get his econ down his econ is nearly split and if they do another failed push like they have been doing they're going to fail because we're just going to be able to push back and he's not going to have the econ to build anything up so I'm going to get my third out and it's kind of risky after being pushed back to be getting my third, but since Deathwraith has his Kalo out now, he's getting out more troops, getting more Kalos, and I have this Roach Conga line continuing to grow, and I'm getting out Larva and just pumping out units. It's not much they're going to be able to do against this. I mean, if they do push back, even though they do have a nice amount of troops, I just have way too many Roaches for them to deal with it. And he's got those Kalos out now, so it's going to be a really risky endeavor if he does try to push that out. And plus, I'm getting out Hydralisk range upgrade. And I've already got Baneling and Speedling upgrades, so if I need to, I can just pump out Zerglings all day. Now, I'm telling Deathwraith we might want to start scouting some bases because I don't want to get hit with anything. I have a Changeling going, turning into a Zealot, and then we're going to poke out. I'm going to see that he has his third right here, letting him know that that third is actually, that second base for the Protoss is actually taken over there at that second natural. So Deathwraith is going to be poking out right around here, and they're going to be moving around, and... Uh, the Terran is going to be expanding at the high grade. That's something you really don't want to happen. But uh, we don't spot it enough time. And they do scan. They see that I have a lot of roaches. I'm getting Hydras out now. And all of these units are upgraded. And they don't... Oh, they scan. They don't see anything. So that scan has kind of failed because I'm building my troops at the second. And I'm also going to get these Tunneling Claws. Get uh, get down Burrow. And just start getting all the tech I really need for roaches and Hydras. Because uh, that's really just the main unit composition I'm going to be going with now. That I see that they're going for ground forces. And if they did go to air... Uh, I would have had a little bit more trouble, maybe. I just would have had to go to the Hydralis. But, I mean, with the composition that I have out right now, I mean, there's really not much to worry about because I do have Hydras. I do have Queens. But these Roaches are just too much for them to deal with. So I'm just going to keep pumping out troops. Deathrite's going to get down some more production. He needs to transfer uh, to a third base because his first is almost out. His second is fully down. And I'm going to have to... I've got my third base down. So I really don't have to worry about it too much because I've been mining off of two for a while. And I'm getting a Spire down just in case I need to tech switch. Because the thing is, Zerg is you, you want to be teching up, but you also want to be prepared to tech switch in case that is something you need to do. 
So death rate's getting this high grade. Me just sitting on three, and that's basically just going to be it for a while. Just teching up, getting these roaches, getting some more hydras out, getting that tech down. Continue this larva production because as a zerk, you want to make sure you get that larva down. And I know my creep highway isn't extremely extravagant or anything, but I really don't want to. I really don't want to make it too extravagant because look, the creep is already starting. Since I'm in the far back, the creep is already starting to hit death rate in his base, and he can't build on my creep. So, I mean, yes, creep is nice, but if you have a partner, try to keep in mind that a creep highway can hinder him as well. That's why I'm not extending this creep highway out in case he needs to build his, because he's getting a little cramped at his base, in case he needs to start building stuff at his base. I want to make sure he has that option. I mean, look, he's got to build all of his shit on the edge just to stay away from my creep. So, because of that, I want to make sure that I have, I give him the ability to build any other places aside from just, you know, right here. And that's why I'm not going crazy with the creep highway. I just need it between my bases so I can quickly get between them. And uh, that's all I'm going to do. And they're going to push out and hit his base. And he's a little, uh, we're both a little underprepared for it. But I mean, I got a lot of roaches and hydras. And here it comes. So they're coming in with Marine Marauder Medivac. And he's got those, those, those damn calls just getting some work done. He's getting all this down. And I'm just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And they're just, look at all the forces they're losing. I mean, Kahlo's just getting some work done, especially that Thermal Lance. And they're like, we can get it. We can do it. Yes, we can. And I'm just like, oh hell no, you cannot. Because the roaches and hydras are here, and look at how many forces they lost. I mean, Deathrith got his collars out just in the nick of time. But now that my roaches and hydras are here, I'm going to start taking out these medivacs. Start kicking the shit out of these stalkers. And just going to town, there's nothing they can do about it. I'm just, I, I lose a lot of forces, but I mean, doesn't even really matter. Because I have teched up roaches and hydras. I believe I'm getting out, yeah, I'm getting out more tech on them. So it really, really doesn't matter. And I got this fire down just in case I need it. But I'm just like, you know what? We're gonna, I'm going to follow them back see what's going up it looks like they have a third we already wrecked their armies so i'm just going to kill this viking even though there's no need really to do so he's going to get some zealots out not much you can do and we're going to take this third because you know what we don't want them to expand anymore their time is up they've been poking our shit all goddamn game time to poke back i mean i'm already getting my hydras and roaches out i'm already starting to build more and more and more i mean like i got full production of units here i got full production of units here now i'm starting to saturate my third base so my economy is just skyrocketing now and I'm just going to poke out with these units here because if I have my reinforcements at my base, if this fails, we can always just push out back again. And even though Deathrite might lose his heavy forces, uh, if I'm continuing troop production, I'm going to have so many forces that I'm not going to be able to deal with. It's allowing Deathrite the time to build back up. So we're pushing out, killing these racks, uh, making sure we want to kill the Terran production first. And we could hit this Protoss base here, but we really want to make sure that the Terran is taken care of because he doesn't have a third base out. He doesn't really have anything he can back this up off of. So, we're going to make sure that he is, uh, you know, he is cut before uh, we even worry about the Protoss. We're going to get these production down. And now that the production is down, I'm going to worry about this expansion here that I already scouted. Because, I mean, Terran need production. When they lose it, they're really in trouble. And since he's got Zealot tanks and those those Kalos, the Terran is not going to be able to do anything about it. It's too late. Deathrite has the tech he needs to deal with the Terran. I can just go to town on this Protoss base, make sure I destroy his economy, because look, his entire main is mined out. I mean, he's got gateways where his mineral line was, and they need to get a third down, but they just did not do it enough time. So as soon as this base goes down, he is just not going to have anything and be able to do with, it, do with it at all. So that's when the Terran backs out. He's just like, dude, there's nothing I can do at all to stop this. And I have this gigantic conga line. Just look at the reinforcements I was talking about. I didn't even need them. I didn't want to get them too early. But that is what I was doing while I was making this push. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh my god, you need to get units out. Dude, I'm getting a ton of units out of two bases. I mean, Death Wraith is two. And that's the thing about Zerg. I'm just going to keep re-upping my military so much more faster than you can even fathom. Because if you let me get these bases out... You're, it's just game over. I got teched up units. I got attack. I think I had I had attack two. I was getting armor two. I was gonna get armor two out. I had full upgrades. I had all roach upgrades. I had hydralis range. I had baneling speed. I had zergling speed. So if I needed to fast switch back to zerglings and banelings, I could have. But I mean, roach hydra is all I needed at the mid game. I was looking to switching back up into air, but it wasn't needed because this pu their push failed. And I just kept pushing out. But anyway. That's going to be the game. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, if you are getting that Marine Marauder with some Protoss backup, a lot of people say Marine Marauder is going to kill you. You can easily do some Banelings first as a Zerg because if they're not going for Voids, uh, you don't really need to worry about uh, getting those anti-air up. 
And early game, those Marines and Marauders, I mean, even late game, they just don't like Banelings. Banelings can just take a massive amount of them out. So if you have Speedlings in the front to soak up the initial damage, because they're not going to be focused firing on the Banelings at first, they're not going to be paying that much attention. You can easily just get those Banelings in there, especially with that speed upgrade, and just blow the Marines and Marauders up to hell. But transitioning to Roaches and Hydras is a nice mix, especially against Protoss. And the reason I go Roach Hydra is the Protoss. It's not because of the, the Terran. If I was just fighting a Terran or two Terran, my troop composition would have had Infestors in there. I would have had more some Banelings. Things, but Roaches and Hydras make you a versatile force, especially against Protoss and Terran, when they have the ability to tech up to multiple lengths where mid-game, I want to make sure I'm covering all my bases. So that's something that Zerg, you got to remember. Keep expanding, keep building troops that will counter your enemies and what you scout, and you'll do fine, because while Zerg have the weakest forces in the game, their strength is their ability to produce far more, far faster than anyone can even fathom. I mean, if they had even re-upped after we made this push, would you think they would be able to deal with this? No. Hell no. I mean, they don't even have enough troops out they wouldn't have been able to push anything remotely close out i mean he's getting air units out but i have so many hydralists it's just it's just done man once i get this production down once they're teched up it's game over the zerg or swarm mentality use that to your advantage well that's it for this episode of scrubcraft everyone i'll see you